uh, welcome sa prayer meeting. It's really a blessing to gather every week sa gitna ng week para manalangin sa ating Panginoon. Uh, and today, uh, the passage that we'll be looking at is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 20 to 25. And I've, I've entitled this, this uh, sermonette or this short devotion as uh, a final argument in favor of prophecy. So let me uh, read out the, the verses to you. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 14. If you have your Bibles, you're, you can feel free to follow along with me. This is verses 20 to 25. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. In the law it is written, by people of strange tongues and by the lips of foreigners, I will speak to this people, and even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Thus tongues are a sign not for believers but for unbelievers, while prophecy is a sign not for believers but for believers. If therefore the whole church comes together and all speak in tongues, and outsiders or unbelievers enter, they will, not say, will they not say that you are out of your minds? But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or outsider enters, he is convicted by all, he is called to account by all, the secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so falling on his face, he will worship God and declare that God is really among you. Uh, may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Uh, with that, let's, let's enter again in a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly God, we thank you for your word that guides us and informs us as to how to live the church life and how to draw closer to your son. We thank you for the clear exhortation as to what is most beneficial and that which does not benefit our goal as a church. Lord, we pray that your word uh, would be heard today and that you would guide your people and make it clear to us, Lord, how we might live to your glory. Please bless our our prayer meeting and uh, your this this devotion, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. So we have been in First Corinthians chapter fourteen for a few weeks now, and many of us will know that we're for, if we're following along. Paul has talked about this issue of gifts. Um, ang, ang intro ko the last time was palapit na ang Christmas months na so syempre maalala natin yung pagbili ng gifts uh, but so gagawin ko ulit yung intro na yun ayan kakagamit ko lang so anyway um, so t- t- towards the issue of gifts uh, sa pag narinig natin yung tongues immediately maraming controversy na siya so uh, hindi natin pag-uusapan yung mga nuances at yung controversy ng issue na yun pero de-define natin muna kung anong ibig sabihin ng tongues and prophecy right so Paul is talking here in 1 Corinthians 14 Medyo may, may building up of an argument siya. At ito, ito na parang yung peak ng argument niya regarding tongues and uh, prophecy. Kasi he's comparing them and in, in chapter, in verse 20 to 25, he compares them one last time before giving the church um, uh, direction on how to have orderly worship. So regarding the spiritual gifts, the message today is prophecy is superior to tongues in its ability to convert people to Christ. And so we have two points. The first point being speaking to condemn, and the second point uh, being speaking to convert. Now, when we look at the passage, uh, we can see that, uh, sorry, I I did say we would define the the terms first. And tongues, as we understand, biblically speaking, is the the professing or speaking in a language that is foreign to the speaker, but is understandable to somebody else. So speaking, speaking in biblical tongues is uttering a language that you yourself don't know, but there is somebody in the congregation or somebody that you're speaking to that does in fact understand or can interpret. interpret. Now, the gift of prophecy, on the other hand, is not what we might think yung propeta na lahat ng sinasabi nila is totoo as in mangyayari na talaga sa Old Testament, but rather our definition of prophecy in this New Testament understanding is the uttering forth, the fa- faithfully uttering forth the word of God. So, masasabi natin na pasok sa prophecy ang exhortation, encouragement, an explanation of the word. So, pwede natin sabihin na parang gift of prophecy yun. Kung magagawa mo yun, pwede mong sabihin na nagpa-prophesy ka. Pero mas okay kung hindi mo sabihin yun para di, hindi ka ma-misunderstand, di ba? But anyway, so now that we've defined these terms, uh, we go to this issue of speaking in tongues. And Paul, you'll notice throughout the chapter, parate niyang binabring up tong issue ng tongues. And maaari kasi, ang nangyari, in the, in the pagan beliefs of the Greeks, 
they had this thing called a trance-like um, utterance. Na they would just do, uh, they would speak unintelligible words, right? And this was their worship to Dionysus, or uh, I think Aphrodite was the goddess that they'd worship in Corinthia in in Corinth. And so there was this practice of they. It, it seems as if the Corinthian church had adopted this and brought it into their new church, into their, into their new Christianity. So Paul is making an argument as to as to why that is inferior to the superior gift of prophecy. And so Paul begins with a strong exhortation. Uh, Paul gets their attention. After this, this somewhat long argument of tongues and prophecy and comparison, he says, now listen, brothers. Um, rather, he says... Um, Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Wag ka mag-isip bata. Parang strong exhortation ka na when you're talking to a friend and you say, hey, don't be foolish right now. And that really gets their attention because he is trying to um, effect a strong point. And he says, be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature, uh, encouraging, encouraging them to change their mind about this issue of prophecy and tongues. And so Paul argues, let's note that Paul argues in the following verses that tongues are a sign for unbelievers and can alienate them further from God. Now, Paul says this explicitly uh, in, I think it is in, chap- in verse 20, 23 or 22. And he says that uh, tongues, in fact, are for unbelievers. They're a sign to unbelievers. So, anong ibig sabihin niya dun? He quotes actually Isaiah 28, verse 11. He says, in the law it is written... By people of strange tongues and by the lips of foreigners, I will speak to his people. And then they will, not, they will still not listen to me. So in this argument of tongues, Paul brings to, to mind to the Corinthians uh, a quote from the Old Testament. And to understand what he means, we need to understand what he meant to Isaiah. So Isaiah was, was speaking forth an oracle to the leaders of Israel. At rebuke ni Isaiah yung ginagawa ng mga Israelite leaders. Naglalasingan sila and ayaw makinig yung mga leaders. As, as a matter of fact, after, after Isaiah gives this oracle, the leaders make fun of Isaiah, and the leaders mock him. They say, who will this man teach? Is he going to teach children? Because he spe- and they were making fun of him. They were saying that he was uh, speaking in a way that um, uh, a Jewish school teacher would teach. Na parang, parang bata ba kami? Na ang pagsalita mo sa akin? Sa, sa amin? And so, in response to this, as a form of judgment, because they did not heed God's words uh, or acknowledge them, so they will be invaded by a nation whose, whose words they do not understand. This is where Isaiah says those words that by a people of strange tongues and by the lips of foreigners, I will speak to this people. We'll notice how Paul says, parang doble ang sinasabi niya. He says, not only uh, people of a strange tongue, iba na nga ang lingwahe, manggagaling pa sa bibig ng foreigner. So, parang doble ang point ni Paul dito, na, or, or point ni Isaiah rather, na ang magiging judgment sa kanila is dahil hindi sila nakinig sa Panginoon, and they, because they did not hear or, or heed God's words, they will now be invaded by people who they cannot even understand, even if they wanted to. And as they hear this, this foreign language being spoken among them, it shall serve as a sign, as a reminder to them of their unbelief. Because as, because as the verse goes on to say, uh, and even then, they will not listen to me. Kahit na mangyari itong sign of judgment sa kanila, ayaw pa rin nila makinig. So, God spoke plainly in their language and was ignored. And so ironically, God will speak to them in a language that they cannot understand. God will speak through the invasion and conquering of Israel by a people whose language they do not know. And we'll note again that this had no spiritually transforming effect upon them. Walang, walang napala yung, pag, uh, yung itong, itong ibang tongues. So speaking in tongues is a, sign of, is a sign to the unbelievers, but it is actually a sign of judgment on unbelievers. And it is not sufficient to convert the souls of people. Paul likens the speaking of tongues in the Corinthian church to the judgment of foreign, la- or of foreign languages. Uh, being spoken to ancient Israel, but they are not the same. So, hindi naman parehas ang gift of tongues sa ginawa ng mga uh, conquering Assyrians ba sa, sa Israelites. So, it's not the same, but he is comparing it in that, <coughs> excuse me, in the same way that 
the foreign language among the Israelites was a judgment upon them, so in the same way will this unintelligible speech or foreign language to the hearers cause the alienation of those who are coming to church. So it alienates, the, the point is that this foreign language alienates unbelievers in their unbelief. So just as the foreign speech of Israel, Israel's invaders referenced in Isaiah 28 testified to the unbelief of Israelites and their alienation from God, so the gift of tongues testifies to the unbelief of the hearers and their alienation from God. And in verse 23, Paul actually goes into a hypothetical scenario. Sabi niya, okay, so kung lahat tayo ay magsispeak in tongues, anong mangyayari? Lahat tayo magsispeak in tongues at hindi natin alam ko anong sinasabi ng isa't isa. We do not know the language, may papasok. At sasasabihin niya, you're all crazy. You're all out of your mind. And we might actually understand this to say really insane, but there is reason to believe na actually they're saying na, oh, you're in that trance-like state. Parehas lang pala ang Christianity sa pagan religions. I can literally go to the Temple of Dionysus and, and experience the same thing. Right? So the sight of all people in the church speaking in foreign languages would be similar to the pagan practices. At the same time, unbelievers would enter the church thinking that they were in the same trance-like state as the other pagans. Uh, Paul goes on to say, uh, if therefore, uh, sorry, that was all right. they, he will say that they are out of their minds. So our challenge today in light of this, in understanding that God has in fact given a sign to unbelievers, let us be reminded of the state that we were once in. Let naman tayo dito ngayon, we're once upon a time unbelievers din. Diba? Di ba nakakaawa when we hear that na itong sobrang tigas ang puso at, at utak nila na even after God had said how they will judge him, they still are, they are, un, they are able to recognize that this is judgment and yet wala, walang na pala sa kanilang kaluluwa. So let's be reminded of the state of unbelievers and each day let us be grateful for our salvation. Uh, now we were once unbelievers unresponsive to God's word and unable to understand it. And now we have all come before Christ, come to believe in Christ. Let us not take that truth for granted. Through the various seasons of life, when, there are, when we are at a loss or when we gain, we can always be grateful that we were not as we once were. Um, and this reminds me of a quote from John Newton who said regarding a salvation, uh, I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I want to be. I am not what I hope to be in another world. But still, I am not what I once used to be. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. So that is the, the point of speaking to condemn. And now we move on to speaking to convert. And this is a shorter point. In contrast to speaking in tongues, Paul asserts that prophecy is for believers and can bring people to actually know God. Prophecy is not a sign for unbelievers that convict them of their unbelief, but rather a means for people to know God. It is more than a sign. It is a sign for believers, but it's also in itself a means for the believers, the, the pre-believers, as you might call them, to get to know God. That, so if an unbeliever were to enter a church, conversely, sinabi po, Paul, ano naman kung lahat tayo nag-prophesy? Isipin mo kung anong mangyari. And he says that, if an unbeliever were to enter church where all people clearly and faithfully communicate the word of God to one another and to the newcomers, the unbeliever would be convicted by the word and the word would, take a, it would, it would cause them to take account of their life, have their sins exposed, have their hearts laid before them, and this would cause them to worship God. And so that's such a clear picture of, there's such a stark distinction between Grabe, baliw pala kayong lahat to nandito ang Panginoong Diyos. Nandito talaga siya. So, prophecy is effective for the conversion of the unbeliever and testifies to the presence of his church. In a way of bringing these two points together, what comes to mind is a chapter in Acts 2. Ang nangyari is the people came, di ba? may glossalyad, may tongues. And you know, in Acts 2, uh, pilgrims were coming all the way to Jerusalem. And, and they, would have, they would have been Jews that spoke another language or maybe uh, Hellenized Jews, but they would have known. They would have known this judgment. And by hearing it in their own languages, they would, they would have remembered this scripture. 
uh, from Isaiah. And here we see, though, in Acts, what's interesting is, even though they witnessed a miracle, men that never spoke their language before, speaking to them in a tongue that they'd understand, that is foreign to the place that they were in, ang sinabi nila siguro, lasing ang mga to. Which illustrates talaga na hindi nakaka-convert ang gift ng tongues. Pero anong nangyari pagkatapos nun? Si Peter nag-sermon. Diba? Si Peter nag-prophesy siya. Inutter forth niya yung words ni God. At nakita natin later on in that, that, that chapter na, many came to know the Lord. They worshiped and they were converted by the message. So let us have confidence in what God has said in this gift of prophecy and what it is able to do. Our challenge is let us all endeavor, all of us endeavor to be able to faithfully speak forth the word of God in our appropriate contexts for the building up of the church and the conversion of unbelievers. Men, if you're uninterested in knowing how to rightly handle the Word of God, you're greatly missing out. For one day, you may have a wife if you do not already, and you will have to teach your wife your Word. You might have children. You will have to teach them the Word. You will need to know the Word for yourself in order to be able to impart it to others. Your brothers who might be in need, in, in need of a word of exhortation, in need of biblical exposition for their souls, you must equip yourselves, brothers. We must be equipped in this. And then also for the women, women who could minister to other women. Definitely, that is such a great thing to do, to be able to handle the Word of God yourself, to see in Scripture as the gift, the Bible as a gift to all of us, to be able to listen to the preacher's words and be able to say, is this in the Word? And to be able to share it to fellow women in need and to children in need. And so whether you're a man or a woman, or whether you are single or, or have a family, or whether you want any of that in the future. It is also, think also of the unbeliever that will walk into the church. If all were equipped, we are given this promise or this depiction of a miracle, of them even being able to say, God is here. What we can enjoy every week in the Lord's Supper, we might be able to impart to another unbeliever, not in substance, not in what we actually do, but in, this, in, in a similar way that we know that God is with us as we partake, they will know that God is here with us as we prophesy and, and utter forth God's word. So uh, in conclusion, in conclusion, as God's people, having formerly been unbelievers, let us live in gratitude to God for our salvation and seek to bring the same to, and seek to bring into the same faith and salvation other un unbelievers as well. Uh, so with that, we'll end in a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly God, Father, we pray that you would grant us this gift, this wonderful gift of, of prophecy, of being able to understand your word, rightly divide it. And we pray that we would see its effect upon our lives and our worship. We pray that, <coughs> excuse me, we pray that you would work through your word to to inform our prayers, Lord God, and, and our faithfulness, that we may pray with faith and that we may pray according to your will, Lord God, if your will be done. And we pray, Lord, that this may be a church wherein unbelievers may come in and say the presence of God is truly among you. Uh, Lord, we cannot do any of these things without your enabling grace, without your mercy towards us. So on you rely, Lord God. We look not to ourselves and our ability but, but your great ability to, to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so we thank you, Lord God, for your, for your faithfulness and for your word. Uh, we ask that you guide us through our prayers tonight. In, in Jesus' name, amen.